Hi, my name is Rachel Steinbach. I am a letterpress and block printer. I live in Chicago, Illinois, and I run a company called Current Location Crafts. Today I'm going to make a little video of how to do some easy block printing from things that you might already have around your house. Enjoy! Here's some of the tools that we can use at home to make block prints. I have a piece of Battleship Gray linoleum. This is unmounted. It also comes mounted if, if you prefer that. If you don't have linoleum, other good options are Easy Cut. This is super soft and easy to carve. It's basically like a big sheet of eraser. It comes in this white color or pink. Otherwise, I just have this small piece of eraser that I had in my studio and then a potato. And so if you can find one of these things around your house, we can get started carving. Then we need something to carve with. So most people will have an X-Acto knife or something like that at home. I recommend a carving tool. These speedball ones are super easy. It has a bunch of different carving ends and they're pretty easy to come by in most art supply stores. Then we need something to print with some sort of ink. Typically I'd use block printing ink, but at home I had this kids grade acrylic paint borrowed from my son's art box. Also I borrowed some crayons from him. Most people have something like that at home if you can find any sort of paint. These are also rubbing crayons. In case you're interested, those make really nice rubbings and so you could always just do that. Then we need something to lay the ink down with. So this is a brayer, basically a little rubber roller, a handle. If you have like a small paint roller that might work. Otherwise I can show you how to make a dauber. If you have a cork at home, I've been making a lot of masks so I have extra spools, empty spools of thread, and then I just got a chunk of new sponge. I'll also try this makeup removing cotton to see if that works too. And then the last thing we'll need is something to give pressure. So this is called a baron. It's basically a smooth surface on the bottom. It's kind of rounded as you can see so it doesn't catch. To be able to give pressure. If you don't have something like that, a wooden spoon works really well or a bone folder in case you're a bookbinder or something like that. This is really nice to give small pressure and detail in your print. So those are some of the materials that you might look around your house and see if you have something similar to that and then we can get started. Okay, so I'm gonna start with just a little eraser block just because it's super easy and it'll start us out and then we can build up to the linoleum afterwards. So on my eraser, it's kind of tricky to see, but on one side there's like a very slight little texture where it has the logo kind of embossed into the eraser. You wanna make sure that you choose a side that's really, really flat and smooth. So I'm gonna choose the side that has just some printing on it which shouldn't be a problem. So if you wanna draw an image on your block, I'm gonna just do a really simple little hexagon so I can create a pattern. So I just cut it out of paper and so I'm gonna trace it. If you wanna freehand draw it onto your block, that's fine too, or you can just go ahead and start cutting if that's how you work best. But I'm just gonna give myself a little idea of where I wanna carve. And I chose the Deep V carving tool, if you can see that, to start with. So I'm gonna just start carving and make sure that you always carve away from yourself. Rubber eraser carves super easy. It's so soft. So this is a great thing to kind of practice in case it's been a little while since you carved anything. And so once I have the shape that I want carved out, and if you can kind of see, I've just carved just around the outside. If I want to then go to clear cut it, like clear out the extra space around it, I can either switch tools on my little easy carver and remove all this extra space. You could also use an X-Acto knife if you just want to cut away the sides. For little rubber carvings like this, I find giving yourself a really healthy depth of your shoulder. It's nice because it'll help keep some of the chatter off of your print. Unless you want some of that texture on the, around the outside, then you could be more thoughtful about how you clear this space out. But if you can see, there's like the surface here and I've carved the rest of it down. And I might just 
take my exacto knife and cut it down even more erasers are nice and forgiving so it's kind of easy to start out with okay so now i have my black and i've given myself a little extra room on each side just so i can hold it without getting smudging my print and getting my hands too dirty because that'll help keep my print clean the cleaner i can keep my hands okay so i can just throw those parts in the bin here's my little block I'm gonna show you just how to make a quick little dauber since this is such a small size. Since it is rubber, you could even use a little stamp pad if you have one of those. If you don't have a stamp pad, again, I'm using a spool from Thread if you have a wine cork. And I'm just taking a sponge and I'll pull it down around there like this. And then I just take a rubber band and I wrap it around the outside so it, it stays down. Okay, so that's my little dauber. So I just have the tiniest little drop of acrylic paint and I'll kind of take a little bit on my dauber and then I want to spread it out because when you're printing, you want a really thin amount of ink on your block. And so then I'll just carefully daub that on And then I can just press it down. Okay, so I'm gonna show you again a little closer up. So I'm taking a little bit of ink on my dauber and I have a little space on, this is just a piece of scratch paper that I had and I can dab it around and then Press it down firmly and then pull it straight up. And the great thing about this is you can do it really simply a bunch of times. So even if you have a small block, you can still create big patterns or big images, um, especially if you're creating a, a block or a pattern that will tessellate. Um, you can just keep kind of combining it. This is a, obviously a really easy pattern, but you could make it more complicated and something that kind of locks together. And then you can create some really cool printed surface patterns. So now I'm gonna move on to a little bit more complicated carving. So I'm gonna work on this piece of linoleum. And I did a quick sketch just on a piece of copy paper. The graphite pencil that I used is fairly dense and then that'll help me transfer my drawing onto my linoleum. If you want to draw straight onto the linoleum that's fine too. But I just take a bone folder and kind of rub and you see how the graphite will just transfer. If you don't have a bone folder, um, a wooden spoon might work just as well. I'm just putting a little pressure onto where the pencil lines are. Okay, so that's transferred. Um, and now I'll take a Sharpie 
because this is going to smudge as I'm working on it. And I'll just start drawing in for myself some of the different things that I need to remember. So that's the general idea. If you are more comfortable with very specific portions drawn in, you're more than welcome to do that too. I might just remind myself that this part of the wing should be thicker so I don't carve too much out. And then there'll be some little shapes inside, little veins of the wings. And then the other thing you want to think about is any sort of texture that you might want to add. Sometimes I'll do this right away and I'll just kind of give myself ideas of where I'm going to want those things. So these legs are going to need to be chunkier here. So on my little honeybee, I might want to make his body seem a little fuzzy. Just a tiny touch. So we'll start from there. So the first thing when you're carving, there's a lot of different ways that you could do it. I try to kind of define some of my edges first, and I actually pulled out a couple of my other carving tools that I can use since switching back and forth from the different knives is a little tricky. Anytime you're carving, you want to remember to carve away from yourself. This is kind of the general hold that I use where I kind of brace with one finger that I'm kind of guiding myself and I keep the rest of it in my palm. These tools work the same, you hold it in your palm. Any, If you have any like woodworking carving tools like this, these work too. They're just a little bit, I find more cumbersome since the type of work I'm doing is so small, but you can also carve back here if you're doing more larger work or more free form. But I'll just start with this little tool and I'll just start defining some edges. The other thing that's sometimes kind of nice, if you have any of this like kitchen grip stuff, not to say this, I often put this down just because it helps hold my block a little nicer. So this kitchen grip stuff will just kind of hold the block a little bit more firm while I'm carving. And I can put in some texture while I'm carving it. So I want the head to be slightly textured too. So I'm adding these, just carving away in a radial pattern. And that way as I carve away, I can then um, leave some of that so it's not a, a completely smooth line. And then once I have some of that, I can remove some of the larger pieces away. And in terms of which knife end, most tools come in two basic shapes. There's U shape curves, please. There's U gouges. And then there's these pointed gouges. So it looks like a U at the end or it looks like a V. Um, and then there's flat knives too which could look like this, and you can see that. When I'm choosing which tool I want to carve, which tool I want to use, I want to think about 
what kind of negative space it's going to create. So do I want it to be a really crisp line? Do I want it to be kind of a smoother line? Some people like to have the texture on the background and some people like to clear cut that. And basically the difference looks like if I take a piece of paper and I'll use one of my rubbing crayons. When I take a little rubbing of what I've worked on, I can get an idea of what, what it looks like when it's printed. So all of this space that I've carved out is going to stay white. And then I've got the part that I've removed. So just play around with the different carving tools and see which one you like. And I use my finger to brace as I'm carving. If you can see, this finger is kind of my pivot point. I'm putting pressure on my finger that's not holding the tool, that's just bracing the tool, and I'm using my other finger to guide around it. Again, I'm using my block and moving my block around so I can always make sure that my knife is cutting away from me. So then I'll start Kind of pulling away any of the background that I don't want to print or any any large areas that I don't want to print and as I do that then I'll be able to get a better idea of exactly what I'm left with and if you do want some of the chatter to come through um, this is a time where you could kind of experiment with some different pattern making to see what it might look like when you're um, printing it because it's very difficult to make sure unless you're cutting your block out um, or carving it really deep to make sure that none of this will print um, and it can give a lot of nice um, texture to your print too but I'm just gonna carve it out so it's kind of like a sunburst out from the bee. Okay. So I have a fair amount carved away from around the outside and I'm just gonna use one of my carving, uh, rubbing crayons. If you have a crayon, this is fine too. Um, but just hold the paper steady and very carefully take a quick rubbing. And that way I can get a better idea where my edges are, what kind of shapes I'm working with. Um, and I can even do a rubbing of the whole thing to see what kind of chatter I'm getting. So I might decide maybe this leg's a little too thick 
Maybe he needs a little haircut up at the top. And then I'll start um, adding a little texture to the wings. But otherwise I think he's, he's it's a pretty good little bee. Um, so I like to keep that near where I'm working just so I have an idea of where I, where I am. Okay, so this is the leg. The nice thing about the rubbings too is it's um, an exact copy rather than a print is always going to be um, a mirror reflection. So it can be a little deceiving because um, if you have any text or any letters, you want to make sure that you flip it. Um, but since I'm working from a rubbing, I can just see exactly what I have and um, take a little of the thickness off of this one little bug leg. Okay. So now I'm going to remove some of the um, material inside the wings just to kind of lighten those up a little bit. And this, I really want some of that texture to stay. So I'm going to just remove some shapes that I think might be kind of nice and then see where we're at. So I'll take another rubbing. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the final thing I'm going to do is because I don't want all of this chatter to stay, um, I'm actually going to take a pair of scissors and cut some of this block material away. And on the unmounted, it's really easy to do this. Um, and that way I'll have some of the texture around, but it will be a more organic shape. Since for this piece, that makes more sense. Um, sometimes you want like a nice crisp rectangle or square around it or whatever shape. Um, but for this, I just try to remove some of that little fuzz too so it doesn't get dirty in my print with ink. So there is my block. Um, and now uh, we're ready to ink. Okay, so we're gonna print our block now. Um, and so I'm just gonna take a little bit of this black ink and put it out on a, just a piece of cardboard that I'm using as my palette. Um, and then I'm gonna roll it out. And so what I'm doing is um, pushing it back and forth and picking up my brayer. And that's gonna give me um, an even coat on my brayer. If you're using acrylic paint or something like that, something that's not like a printmaking, water-based printmaking ink, or even water-based printmaking ink actually, if it's not oil-based, you're going to want to try to ink up as quick as possible so it doesn't dry. And then take your piece of paper, and put it on top, and then I'm going to use my Baron and just quickly and evenly rub all around my block and then I'll peel it up. So there's the block and there's my carving. Now if I want to print it again, I can just ink it up again. And I'm just using an old scrap piece for the, this print. And there you go. So that gives me, you can see that this one, um, because the ink that I laid down before is a little bit thicker in places, um, I might have needed a little bit more texture. On this one I had a little bit more coverage. But that's my little bee. We are going to do one more little carving, and this one is a potato. We've just cut it in half. Um, again, you want to make sure that you cut it as smoothly as possible so you have a nice printing surface. And maybe I'll just make this one a nice little flower to go with our, our bee. So just the same thing I'm carving away from me. This one is a little bit trickier. 
too because it's a potato. So I'll use this little rag to help keep the little potato bits under control. And I think part of the fun thing about potato carvings is leaving evidence of what the material is that you're carving into. You don't have to, but um, I'm gonna make my flower kind of potato shaped. So once I have my little carving, and I have all of the potato bits wiped off. I just washed off my dauber, the sponge, took it off, washed it off, tried to get as much of the moisture out as possible. Um, since this is so slippery, um, I think using a dauber tends to work a little better. Um, if you want to let your potato dry out a little bit more um, and see if uh, you can get some good results with the brayer that will probably work too. Um, I'm just gonna mix some ink to get a nice purpley color for my flowers. It's pretty good. So again, I can just take a little bit, get my nice little ink pad, and then hold my potato as I carefully dab it on. This is a good time to check since I now have, it's a little bit more contrasting to make sure that I like the shape of my potato carve potato block. I think it's pretty good. Maybe I'll just clean up this petal a little bit. Okay, and now I always like to do a little practice test. And as you can see, that's smudged a little bit. So I'm going to try again. It's tricky because the potato is round and potato. So I'm going to be extra careful this time. Put it straight down, give it a little bit of pressure, pull it straight up. And there's my potato flower. Um, if you're doing it on thicker paper, we can try to see how this will work. So that was just copy, copy weight, probably 70 pound text cover weight, 70 pound uh, cover weight, uh, text paper, excuse me. Um, now this is cover weight paper, it's a little thicker, probably 100 pound. And I'll just put it down gently and push again and bring it straight up. And there's my little flower.